After much goading by family and friends, I began work on my third book. It's about how I met my mother. It's a story I didn't intend to write. I hated those stories when people would foist them on me of adoption searches that turned out wonderful. I wasn't sure mine was ever going to play out. And now that it has, I don't want to impose it on somebody else, but they insisted. And it's been a very interesting process. I've learned a lot about my story. I realized that I was given a story when I was adopted. It was kind of an inherited story. It wasn't really mine. I always had a feeling it didn't quite fit, but it sort of, in a strange way, became my story. Primarily because it was the story of those I loved, of parents and grandparents and cousins. It was a story that was very colorful, very powerful, a story that was rehearsed again and again, told over and over at family gatherings or just hanging out with my mother. A story, a family, in which I was sort of part of, more so for some than for others. But I always had a feeling there was another story, a story that I probably would never know, a story of a mother, a father, maybe brothers, sisters, who knew? It could be a good story, it could be a tragic story, it could be a story full of mystery or heartache. When I met my mom, I discovered more of that story. It was truly mine in a way that the other story wasn't. I can't tell you how that is. I just feel it. I talked at first about it being an incomplete story or an interrupted story. You know, separated by 62 years. Quite an interruption. But the longer I get to know my mom and my sisters and other relatives and listen to the story, I realize that it was never interrupted. That it continued to unfold in me because it was a story embedded inside of me. It was woven in that strange double helix we call DNA. It explained why I think the way I think, why I say things, why I do things, why I behave the way I do, why I walk with that strange walk, why I like this and don't like that. Yeah, it is my story. It is a difficult story at parts. It is a wonderful story in others. But it's my story. I can own it in a way that I couldn't own the other. But what I've discovered in playing with those two stories in the book is that there is a third story in my life that was probably more important for guiding and setting me on the path that I have gone on than either of the other stories, and that is God's story. And by that, I don't just mean the story we read in the Bible. It's much bigger than that. That, that story plays out way beyond the pages of Scripture. But it is indeed that story it is a story of our primordial ancestors, Adam and Eve and grandpa and grandma 
Abe and Sarah, and cousins Jacob and Esau, and that colorful Joseph. Then there was Moses. Wow. What a story that was. And then there were folks like David. Ooh, what a story. <laughs> Makes my life look dull. And then there were infamous kings like Ahab and Ahaz that we'd just as soon chop off the family tree. And nut jobs like Elijah and Ezekiel. And then there was that really bizarre story. You know, the one we heard last night of angels and shepherds and a babe born in a feed trough. The word made flesh that dwelt among us. I would argue that that word in flesh didn't just dwell among us but dwell within us. That story in Christ is now embedded in us. And not just those of us who claim Christ as Lord, but in all humanity. Some just don't know it's their story yet. But it continues to unfold with the likes of the apostles, with the likes of Peter and Paul, with Mary and Joanna, Titus, Timothy, Silas, Dorcas, Lydia. And it pours out of the pages of scripture to include the likes of Ambrose and Augustine, Claire, Catherine, Hildegard, Thomas, Martin and Katie, Soren. All kinds of relatives that are part and parcel of that story that is embedded in us, God's story. And not just the ones we read in the Bible or the pages of history, but those that were so important in our lives, those that taught us the story, our parents, our grandparents, our friends, our relatives, those who wove their fabric in and out of our story those that taught us so much about life and living. They're part of our story, too. They're part of God's story. That word is enfleshed all around us. That story is the story of God's dealing with humanity. It is our story to tell. And we haven't been really good at that. We think it's just our story. And so we are sent. Sent back to the fields like the shepherds last night. Sent to sing of a new song like the angels. To tell that story over and over again. That others may come to recognize themselves in that story to come to realize that it's not just my story, but it's our story. A story, a holy story, a sacred story, a story that was meant to share, that all may come to know that wonderful mystery of what it means to be a child of God. It is our calling, not just this season, but each and every day, to be that living story, to tell that story. It is my wish for you 
this coming year, that you may learn more of that story and how to tell it. But for now, Merry Christmas and enjoy that word made flesh full of grace and truth. For it is you. Amen. <laughs>